Hello, everyone. Welcome to Real Men's Talk, where it is seasoning hot, interactive, and transforming. On today's episode, we shall be treating the topic single parenting. Single parenting. If you're watching live, hashtag live. If you're going to be watching the replay, hashtag replay. You can also drop your questions or comments at the comment section and also remember to like and share our videos. If you have any topic you want us to, you have any suggested topic, you can as well DM us or send us an email. You can also drop it at the group. So going by today's topic, single parenting. Single parenting is nurturing a child or children without a spouse or a living partner. This could be as a result of the, part of the spouse, divorce, separation, abandonment, breakup, or childbirth as a single parent or single parent adoption. Single parenting, and in the studio, I have my co-hosts who are going to be looking at it together. In the studio, we have Dr. Femi Salmon. Good evening, viewers. I'm happy to be here. Yes, good evening, sir. And also our co-host, Pastor Samuel Ido. Pastor Samuel, good evening. How was your week? Good evening, ma. God bless you. Good evening, viewers. Good evening, sir. And on this episode, we have some special guests who are going to be looking at this topic with us. We have as our special guest today, Dr. Lila St. Matthew Daniel. She is a leading clarity coach, transformative thought leader and attitude, uh, attitudinal and behavioral strategist who has worked with various people to enable them perform optimally in their personal work life. Her ability to draw on her invaluable diverse knowledge and skills in coaching, psychology, therapy, and digital understanding enables her the skill to deploy life transforming solutions that empower and inspire real life learning for change in people's personal and professional lives. She is also a mother and our grandmother. Good evening, Ma. We're delighted to have you. I'm honored to be here. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Loud and clear, Ma. We're glad to have you, Ma. Okay. Yeah, also, as our guest today, we also have Dr. Franklin Negar. Sorry. Don't let me uh, murder the name. He's a Cameroonian, a doctor of mercy. He's current, currently studying for an MBA in health management. He has been in active service for the last four years, during which time he has served as unit head of the Women's Health Program at Bingo's Baptist Hospital and the Non-Communicable Disease Prevention and Control Plan Program at Baforsan Baptist Health Center. He is currently serving as a site lead for the HIV free program at Mizam Polytechnic Polyclinic Baminda. Welcome Dr. Franklin. Thank you and I'm very honored to be part of this show this evening. We're glad to have you too. So straight to today's topic, single 
to arrange my first to Dr. Leah. Ma, I would like to ask you, is single parenting bad? Well, um, like, um, I'd like to say that we never, I didn't have a pre-question situation, so I'm going to just, the questions are coming uh, live. Single parenting is not, um, I would not say, <laughs> from my own viewpoint, is nothing to be ashamed of, is nothing, nothing bad, because there are different reasons why a parent is, uh, um, I mean, a person, whether male or female, is a single parent. So we cannot just say it's bad, just like that. There's nothing bad in it as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so much, Ma. Our my next question, we go to Dr. Franklin. How does single parenting affect a child? Do I still have him? Yes, I still have him. How does single parenting affect a child? Well, um, I don't know if I want to answer it from a medical standpoint or a sociological standpoint, but generally, ideally, apart from the methods in which you become a single parent, either it is through training or it is short step product technology, they may or may not be medical uh, effects. We put it that we because reports uh, have shown that uh, civil that had their children through assisted reduction technology might be, the children might be prone to having uh, chromosomal anomalies due to processes that are involved in having the child. But in the nutshell, if I can tell you, I did not think it has a negative effect on the child medically. However, for the sake of I mean, general, generally, uh, psychologists will tell you the child needs both parents for healthy upbringing, psychologically, mentally, and otherwise. They may question psychologically, they question the environment in which the child grows. In terms, in terms of the uh, metal and cognitive capacity, uh, capacity building, but over the years they have been uh, methods in which these have uh, these single parents have been able to cope with all of these with absence, absence of one of uh, one one parent through either counseling or uh, assistance from vision and and other medical specialists. You are muted. We can hear you. You are muted. You're seated. Okay. I think my there is echo coming from my side. That's why you had to mute me. It's okay. I'm going to Dr. Samuel. Children of single parents have higher risk of dropping out of school. How true is that? Thank you very much. The uh, people have always said that uh, two good days are better than one. And it can actually be true when it comes to parenting. I'm, I don't know if I'm audible enough. Am I audible? Hello? You're audible. Yes. You're audible. Loud and Thank clear. you. Thank you very much that good ends, two ends are better than one. And that is not, uh, single par parenting is not exempted from this analogy. So there are so many problems in which uh, children from the home of single parents are exposed to. And dropping out of school may not be uh, 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 out of it. 
let's look at it from this point of view. The um, a child needs as much as possible care from I mean two parents, especially in Africa where multiple parents will have to take care of that child. So uh, children from single parents has been known to have some problem and dropping out of school is not can be not be far fetched from it because of care, attention, or monitoring that uh, the two parents we want to give. So telling saying that is uh is a common thing to single parent to single uh, to a child from single parenting is not far fetched. It's a possibility drug abuse, juvenile delinquency, dropping out of school, poor performance, depression, and all those things. Yeah, what could happen in a, to a child in single parenting? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I'll go to Dr. Layla. Layla. Ma, is it correct to say that most children by single parent grow up either promiscuous, indisciplined, or find it find life difficult? Like I said, there is no one size fits all. Even if a child is from a, a, a two-parent um, uh, background, if a child is going to be promiscuous, if a child is going to be a, a druggie or whatever, they will become it. It all depends on the values, the value system, and the, the nurturing, what was instilled in those parents in their formative years. And we say that it's between minus zero to seven plus seven plus to eight, that is when the, um, the cognitive behavioral patterns are formed by the values that they hear from their five senses, what they see, what they hear, what they see, um, what they touch, what they smell, you understand? So when parents are doing things, even when it's a double parent situation and uh, they think the children are not listening, they're not hearing, they're not, you know, having a sense of what's happening, that is what is going to mold that, that child. Now, coming to single parenthood, can you hear me? Because everybody seems to have gone off. Yes, um, we can hear from, you. Man. Coming from single parenthood, as I said, it depends on the values and the, and, 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 and the nurturing that is put in there. It's harder for a single parent to instill these. But even I will go back to a double parent if it, it turns out that if they have a dysfunctional marriage, you will find that it's one parent who is actually instilling the value system in there. So um, when you're a single parent, it's, it's harder. You have to um, be very conscious of what you're doing. You have to be conscious of what you want to uh, the children to turn out to you because there's no, there's no that thing that they used to say, do as I say and not as I do. That's what creates, you know, dysfunctional, heavily dysfunctional children. I looked after my four girls when my husband died singly. Do you understand? So I don't know whether you knew that before you asked me to come on this show. And I must say that my four girls are well-behaved. They're all mothers now, except one who just got married in uh, uh, last year. And we pray God, um, you know, gives her her own. Uh, I've, I've, I, I, I have had to sacrifice, you see, the values are the critical point of what you impute into a child who will now grow into the twin and then teens and then becomes a young adult. So it all depends. It all depends really on the parent, that single parent, whether male or female, are they ready to give up certain things? That is the critical point. And that is where we go wrong. Once you are not ready and you are behaving as if you are not single, a single mother or a single father, they are going to pick up on a lot of things. And they already have that, you know, uh, that emotional um, uh, issue of not having one of the parents. Like uh, Dr. Samuel said, it's always good to have both parents, but if the parents are responsible parents, responsible, sometimes it's even worse for, for, for uh, a child to be in a marriage setting where the two parents are irresponsible. 
So it all depends. It all depends. But it's a great sacrifice. That's what I have to say. I can, I'm saying it from experience. It's a great sacrifice. And if you don't sacrifice and have the God factor there, because we are all guardians. We are not owners of those children. That's what I tell people. We are guardians that God has given to nurture these children. So what are you imputing into them? So it was a great sacrifice um, for me. Uh, I had to put myself to one side sometimes, uh, most times, and just key on to the fact that I had girls. All of my children were girls. And it was very, very critical because I had to play the role of mother and father. So it was very, very critical mm -hmm. that what I say is what I am doing. Do you understand? So they will have no reason to yeah. think to them. You know, that kind of stuff. So when I open eye to them, there's no thing that they can hold to me. They don't see this. They don't see that, you know. So it all depends. Let me leave it like that. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank so you, Ma. single parenting is satisfying because one partner has to play the party, the, uh, the position of both parents. I'm still coming back to you, Ma. What are the effects of single parenting on the single parents? Me? Is it for yes, me? Yes, ma'am. The effect yes, is that it's very debilitating. It's very hard. Where probably you could, uh, you know, share things to one parent or the other, depending on if one parent, I can now talk about myself, depending on if the man, because I'm female, is a responsible man. I tell you something. Most mm -hmm. times, sometimes, sorry, I take back, sometimes you find that a man is in a marriage, but he's not there. He's not responsible. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a counselor mm -hmm. and a therapist, I, uh, I work with a lot of situations like that, and I've had to intervene. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, it's not mm -hmm. easy. It's taking the role of two people. Now, the danger is that you could become too strong and harsh on them. And so you have to be able to mm -hmm. balance it up. You have to be able to balance because you see, when you are two and you know you are relatively okay as a couple, there is like the good cop, bad cop situation. They will run to this person. This person is the one that will. This person is the one who is the disciplinarian. This person is the one who will rub uh, a little bit of uh, you know thing on it, and they are playing that game. They have to work in unison. Now, a single parent, what I found was that I had to be tough when tough had to be. I had to learn to be soft when soft had to be. Now, if a single parent does not know how to do the two, if you are too soft, you could create a situation whereby the children will have no discipline and then they will grow up into undisciplined, dysfunctional children. If you are too harsh too, they could resent you and wish that they had the other parent around, even if the other parent was nasty or anything. So it's a balance. It's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's, it's quite tough. But as I said, it all depends on your mindset. It all depends on your own values. It all depends on uh, the kind of inner resilience that you have, inner resilience that you have. And it comes through learning. I, I, I didn't get it all at the same time. And because I have passed through, I have been able to help single men, single, uh, single fathers, single mothers to wade through that most difficult terrain. It's a bit difficult terrain that you must not even refer to the other party. You see how your father is. That is how he is. That is how your mother is this. You must not. Like they used to say something that it is when there is a quarrel that the hatred comes in or, or nasty words. At one time, it was good. You understand? But it wasn't easy for me as a young mm. woman. I had to navigate, navigate, navigate. And now all the sacrifices, because you lose yourself too. But if you don't give up certain things and they see you behaving in an irresponsible manner, they will turn out to be dysfunctional in certain ways, yes. So it's not easy, <laughs> uh, but the grace of God prevails. Even for men, even for men who are single, <laughs> well, I have that, single parents. It's not easy for them too as well. It's not easy for them, for them to be able to handle the two at once. So sometimes they then go ahead and get married, hoping 
that they have a stepmother who will be good. <laughs> it's a lucky situation for that uh, for for that area. So thank you very much. I'll keep quiet for now. Thank you so much. I would have loved to also ask you this next question, but don't let me bombard you. Let me go to Dr. Franklin. <laughs> so, Dr. Franklin, what major problem do single parents face? Uh, when, it's, uh, when it's about major problem, what exactly I refer to? Problems with themselves, problems with life, problems with anything specific, any area specific which you you can address anyone that you can think of. could be finance, it could be emotional. Yeah, just to show up on what uh, Dr. Lila was saying. The problems can really vary and it depends on how the parent handles the situation at the beginning. When it comes to to the single parents, for example, it might have problem with time time management. It depends if the, the, the parent has a regular nine to five job, how busy is she at work, her availability to Tend to uh, the child's school activity, help the child with homework. She have to do two, three courses. Like in uh, some cases, with difficulties finances, you have a single parent that is doing like two, three jobs at the same time. Just keep up because other parents. In case where uh, it was a the way two parents and the one who left or passed away, the burden of the family. Then you have. Some Parent that now has this burden of providing what she previously, yes, she previously wasn't providing, and the kids and everything. I think generally the problem, major issue, it, it has to do with it generally stems from finance because if you are financially stable, not, not saying that finances might be the only issue. That is a parent I face for the important issue because finances, if someone has a stable, lasting finances, you tend to be able to sacrifice time like what Lela, Lela was saying. You have to give up certain things, and sometimes yes. it really is going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. You probably were used to having spankings, now you are alone with Ricky. It's, you don't know how to handle the weekends. You have to do the chest was You have to prepare them for for next week. You have to make sure the school table. You have to make sure clothes and all that. You realize that the things that you probably use to pleasure, you can't do it anymore. And mentally, for the parent, it takes a toll on you. Sometimes it, it the parent might even get. To a point where I depressed and overwhelmed with the, the the responsibilities of catering for these children. So generally, it depends on the angle from which you see it. It might be finances, it might be time management, it might be just the overwhelming uh, responsibility that has a very severe toll on your mental health generally. And that's that part I think is is. It's going to be the major issue because when the parent has this uh, mental uh, disability, if I may call that way, it just generally spirals down from there. Everything just goes out with. So I don't know how to wrap this up, but I think that's going to be the major problem to be able to have this life balance between what used to be and what is now in a way that doesn't affect the the parents' mental stability. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Franklin. Dr. Lila, do you have anything to add to that? The if I mean what major challenges 
the single parent phase? Maybe you might have one or two things to add to that. Well, the major challenge is uh, most times uh, financial, like uh, Dr. Franklin has said, is financial. And um, another thing is to be emotionally resilient because it's not easy. Even the parent who has one sees it as a challenge, bringing up that child. So um, the ability to be emotionally resilient is there or else you could break down and then take it out on the child. You understand? Begin to attack the child and um, that is where it could degenerate into, you know, uh, repressed um, issues for the child, which would manifest later in life. So it's financial, it is uh, the aloneness, loneliness, is the aloneness of having to make decisions and take decisions uh, that uh, you could easily have asked someone else. Because yes, you could have a support group if you ha are lucky to have parents or sisters or things like that whom you can bounce off ideas with. But at the end of the day, it's the, your decision. And so those are the two uh, situations. And of course, when we talk about timing, uh, it now boils down into you. So whatever you are doing, uh, you must factor in the time that will be required maybe to pick them up from school, to do this, to do that. You have to marry it to your own situation. And it's not easy. Nowadays, uh, it's much easier for parents to have um, a crash or a place that they can have the children stay and then you pick them up. But you need to be careful because there's a lot of uh, sexual abuse going on everywhere. So if they are girls, even boys, you need to be careful. So all mm -hmm. in all, it's a, it's a tough one for single parents. But if you are determined and you can structure yourself because the human being likes structure a lot of us don't structure ourselves the human brain sorry let me dr franklin will understand the human brain likes structure likes to be told this is it this is it but if you do it like this like that you will just get frustrated so i learned to be structured and in trying to be structured i was able to you know although they used to call me margaret thatcher well, that was their business <laughs> <laughs> but now the girls say to me that they were so happy. Do you mean the wedding of outside What? what? <laughs> they, they Do you mean your children? They call you Margaret Thatcher or the outside What they mean is they used to say it to themselves. <laughs> it was now they were grown up and then they were talking one day. And said, oh, whenever we heard someone, so they say, ah. Tata is calling you. What did you do? <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> but what helped me basically is my God factor. You know, my support was in God. You understand? It was the God factor. And uh, it's not easy. I won't, I won't say anybody deliberately goes out to being a single parent. Unless those who decide maybe they are late uh, and they go for artificial insemination. I, that's something I was dealing with last week. And I say, when you are above a certain age, it is unfair to go and begin to breed children because you see, there is a time frame when you are strong enough to do certain things. And you don't know the seasons and times. You just pray every day to be alive. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So when you now begin to breed children at 48, 49, 50, 50 plus, I mean, when the child is becoming energetic, you are, you are becoming slightly, um, what do you call it, weakened, you'll be 60, the child is 10. You understand? So it's okay. Thanks. I hope I've added to what Dr. Franklin said. Yes. I'm also coming back to what you mentioned about um, our matured adult deciding to go for single parenting, we'll go to that. But before we go to that, let me go to Dr. Samuel. Dr. Samuel. Yes, I'm with you. Um, do you think single father make better parents? Do single fathers make better parents? Oh, thank you very much. I don't think so. That question is somehow. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, 
look at it from this point of view. Single fathers making better parents. No. The best bet is still to have both parents. But in some cases where you cannot help it, but to act as a single parent, maybe the loss of one spouse or or uh, divorce or so, and you have to be in custody of the child. There's something you can do. Nature we nature has thrown that at you, and you have to face it squarely, and you can actually face it. But to say that uh, one end is better than two may not be correct. So single pay, single father. Because it depends on how there are so many things involved. I don't have much experience with single parenting like Dr. Leila. I've always lived with both parents. My parents are still alive. And they are also with me at home here. They came from a medical checkup. I've known my parents to stay to be married for more than 50 years. They've been with me. I've been married with my family. So I've never experienced what it means to have to, to be a single parent. But let's look at it from this point of view. Being a parent on its own is an Aquilian task. So it's like making, putting, make double Aquilian task when you are, when you are, uh, you are not a single parent. So a single father, there is no way it can be better than double parenting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll throw that question somehow to Dr. Lila. That's Single parenting, is it better to be as is it better for the child to be the single father or mother? From your experience with coaching, what do you think, ma? It all depends, as I said, because there is no rigidity or one one size fits all. If a child is in a situation where there is violence whether it's abuse, whether emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, it is better for the child to be with one parent. It's better for them to go their separate ways and the child is with a parent that is not abusive because a parent who is abusive um, um, uh, uh, needs help and there's nothing like you made me do it. Now, nah. everybody has the choice to either allow your emotions to take control of you or you decide to take control of the situation. Do you understand? So it's always better that um, whether it's violence or abuse, the child stays with the party that is the least violent. But really and truly, where uh, there is an ambience of... Um, family background and everything it is good if the parents i keep saying if the parents have values instilled in themselves too because they have dysfunctional parents they are dysfunctional children in a dysfunctional environment everybody dysfunctional you understand because if a parent is dysfunctional that parent cannot nurture a functional child successfully because they are grappling with their own issues you see so it's 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 best for a child to be nurtured by the two if they are steady if they are able to be good parents but if they are not it's better for the child not to be there because the child will listen to everything that is going on and begin to form form behavioral patterns based on what he is seeing and hearing and being exposed to. But basically a child is better in a two parent situation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma. On that note, ma, do you think single parenting is easier for one sex than the other? Is it easier for the single mother or the single father? Or who has more challenges? Or do we say the father finding more difficult as a single mother? You will find that some men even may be more, more caring, more nurturing than yeah. even the woman. I always say it's not every woman that's a mother. Every woman is a woman. Like not every man is a father, but a father is a man who can steer a child. A woman is a woman who can, who can bear, carry the child. 
But is she a mother? You could find that a man could have the nurturing instincts even better than the woman that uh, has conceived. But basically, legally, the ch a child should be yes, with. Well, I can see him. I don't know if others are, can hear you. Dr. Can you Franklin, hear Dr. Samuel, can you hear? It's clear. Loud and clear, ma. Loud and clear. So I don't, I don't, um, it's, it's much better with the father. I'm sorry, with the mother, especially even legally, a child below the age of 12 is said to be, if they have to separate, is said to be with the, uh, with the mother because a mother is created to nurture. A father is a provider, is created to be a provider. And the woman is the nurturer. Do you understand? So uh, it's always better for the woman to look after the child, children or child. But if for any reason she is seen to be unstable emotionally, physiologically, psychologically, then it has to be found out if the man can look after um, the, the, the children. And I know one or two men who who have handled it very well who have handled it very, very well. In fact, some of them will not even get into a serious relationship until the children passed a certain age. That is if there is a separation early, until they've passed a certain age where they can stand on their own. Because, you know, he, he, the, the person said that he didn't want to uh, get into a situation where he gets, goes and gets married. And they, you know what they say about uh, difficult stepmothers? and uh, everything like that and you will find that they will not tell you the truth you know evil stepmothers i watch mm. it on tv they, they are okay with the man when the man goes like this ha for all day as they say but when they are of a certain age <laughs> then you find that, that the man then has mm. his own companion so it's more the mother mm. and not the mother yes but you see with me you can't catch me because you see, I will defend both sides, both the male and the female. I will I walk both <laughs> ways, depending on the situation. As I say, there is no one one pattern fits all. Like Dr. Franklin, who is a medical doctor, you could give somebody, somebody comes to you and says you have, have a headache and you do your and you give panadol. Another person will not react to that panadol. You have to now give double 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 something 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 else you understand yes they are exhibiting the same symptoms but you now saw something that was manifesting that didn't manifest with me but manifested with that so it's not one panadol fits all same thing as one set of situation fits all there's something going on right now that they say the children should be with the mother and not with the father but there is there, there's uh, uh, there's evidence to be proven that the mother is slightly unstable. And in that case, if they prove it, the children will be given to the father with visitation rights from the mother. Now, if there is no contention and it was a death, there is no choice. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. I'm going to Dr. Franklin. How do single parents handle rules and discipline in the home? How should they manage discipline and rules in the home? Uh, I think Dr. Laila had Dr. Franklin? Yes, I get me. Hello? Is anyone see me? Hear you, but it's uh, breaking. Yes, oh, okay. It's breaking. I'll just try to move closer to this. Okay, it's better uh, now. Right. So, okay, I was saying that uh, I think that uh, Lila had mentioned that at some point. Uh, you think, parent, unfortunately, you you can't really see that you're in play. That's my bro in seeing the children. Whatever the case is, the eye rules will be You are going to handle it all rules. So, when it comes to one role you are going to play in the children, 
like one of the it depends on the situation. You don't have the luxury of that you're going to be the good cop or you're going to be the bad cop. It depends on the situation say you read the that are more like absolute you you can and shit. You have you have to be hard on the key. That's just where you may or may not want to be hard. Depending on how you feel the child is going to perceive it and how the correction or the discipline is going to come across. So generally it depends on what situation you are dealing with in front of you. So you and yes, simple, you really don't have the choice of choosing which rule you're going to take. You just have if I thought you have a choice, it's not going to be whether or not you like it. It's going to be whether or not it's the best choice given the situation in which you're facing. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, ma. We can hear you. Yes, I hear you. Okay, so I'll come to all right. Thank you. I want to be sure I can you can hear me. Um, Dr. Layla, Dr. Layla, I think our network is bad, so in that case, I will go to Dr. Samo. Dr. Samo, can single parent Okay, okay. Let me Take this with Dr. Samuel, I'll now come back to you. Okay, no Can single parents raise successful children? Dr. Samuel? Why is it not? possible single for parent can... single parents to raise successful children? Yes, it's very possible. With dedication, what parenting needs is dedication. It's just that a single parent will have to work harder, doubly harder, mm -hmm. for them to, I mean, to achieve their aim. Single parents, I have seen single parents that have raised successful people good people it's just that you have to work very very hard because the way the uh the, the way the society is built up is skilled towards having two parents so when you're a single parent the challenges will be there for you for the children but if you are working hard enough you are dedicated you are you are me you have your tag set your target around all uh, uh, right and you will make it it's not impossible it's not a, a whole do that cannot be surmounted. It's just that you need to be more dedicated, more committed to the parents, and something good will come out of it. With God helping you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So I'm now going to Dr. Lila. Ma'am, how do single parents overcome their loneliness and enjoy life? You're muted, ma. Sorry. What is driving you is the differentiation. You have to differentiate between aloneness and loneliness. Um, you could want to be alone without being lonely. You could want to be lonely. And then the other side is you actually wanting, you know, um, companion around you and whether female or male, depending, and uh, you find that you have to give up certain things. Because you see, when you are a single parent, you better be careful the uncles and the aunties that you bring into the house. Children are not stupid, you understand? And you are mm -hmm. trying to nurture the baseline for them. So if they see today this uncle, tomorrow this auntie, depending on if it's male or female, you are creating certain values in them that could play out later. So where I tell people, I said, you have to take a choice. You have to sacrifice to be able to nurture properly. That is why some people who have sacrificed more than especially when they have been in a terrible uh, relationship and they say they stay there because of the children. When they turn around much later and say, because of you, I stayed with so, 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 the children will turn around. They're now adults and say, you chose to be there. You chose to stay. 
Do you understand? So there are sacrifices that you need to make. You can't say one thing and you are doing another. You can't be violent or aggressive and you wonder why they are reporting them from school every single day. This one has beaten this one. This one has bullied this one. This one is promiscuous. They caught her somewhere and things like that because it's a cry for attention. So the aloneness, one had to, as a young woman, it was... Um, difficult it was difficult but right in front of me like a carrot there were times that you know you would try one or two relationships and you see that it wasn't it's not worth it at all can you still hear me she's gone off now but can uh, dr franklin and uh, dr samuel hear me yes ma'am okay yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah you 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 try one or two situations and then you then discover to yourself that it's not worth the effort because the 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 the, the responsibility far outweighs the personal um, need. So you just learn to get yourself involved in a lot of things. Now, if you don't learn to get yourself involved in things, then you will get yourself into trouble. You will get yourself mm -hmm. into trouble. You the, the human being is created for companionship. You are created for companionship. And when companionship is not there, there is a desire for that companionship. Now, if you are not confident in yourself, you will attract, your energy will attract the wrong people to you. And you could find that the companionship that you wanted from XYZ, you will not really get it. Instead, you will just get a whole load of psychological, emotional trauma. So you then say to yourself, you know, what do I need? It's not easy. I tell you, it is not easy, but it is a choice. It is a choice that you can make because there is nothing that you cannot do. Getting to this age, I have realized that there is a lot that when you think you cannot handle, you can actually handle. It will seem difficult, but later when you look back, you say to yourself, my, 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 oh my, I thought I was going to die if I didn't get involved in this or didn't get involved with that, but you waded through because you had to be with the children. So every consultancy or everything I was doing had to be around where I was, had to be in the same locale where I was. And I would make sure that I, um, uh, the, 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 the person that would look after them, whether a relative who would be ready to do certain things. And that's what I tell, I tell people, it is, it is a sacrifice. You sacrifice your own needs. You have to sacrifice your own needs. And look at it now. I have me time. They're all grown and I have me time. But I'm so used to being with me that I love my me time. I, I, you know, I love my time with myself and, I'm, and I guard my boundaries very, 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 very jealously. You understand? So it is the, the <laughs> single parent learning how to be resilient, learning how to acknowledge that, yes, I will be lonely. Yes, because you are um, relational beings. I will be lonely. I will have a desire for the opposite sex. True. I will have a desire for the opposite sex. But I learned to shift my focus. You see, if you don't learn to do that quick shifting, and replace it with something that is equally as nice. You, you, you will have problems. I shifted, I write, I watch movies, I could go up by myself, you know, those kind of things. It's an individual person. That's why I tell people that when you find that you are not emotionally strong, you need a counselor or coach to help you wade through and get you strong inside. And that is dealing with yourself and your priorities once you know what your priorities are you now have to ask yourself which one is important you can't have the two either this or that so that is it thank you thank you so much man in fact you have taught my next question but I'll still ask it. So maybe you might need to do some well, little touch on it. it. Well, so on, the, no, on that note, is it possible? Is it possible? I'm still talking to Dr. Lila. 
Is it possible for a single parent to find love without affecting their children negatively? So if they found love, how should they manage their newfound relationship with their parenting intact? It is possible to find love, yes. It is possible to find love. But you need to be very, very careful. Very, very, very careful. And that is now being able to deal with you yourself. Why do you want to find love? What is the reason that you want a companion? What are the things that, what are the values, your own values, your own homely values with your children? What are your values vis-a-vis -vis the values of this other person that is coming? If the values for any reason is not in sync, then you better not go into it because it will not work. It will not work. You will regret it. So it is possible to find um, a love again, but it must be love with your sense, not love with your heart or your physical desire. You've got to marry it with your senses because it's not all about you. You have other people with you, and these people are the young ones that you need to nurture. So it's not a case, it's my life, I can do anything. No. The time you can, is my life, I can do anything, is when they are grown. Like, it's my life now, I can do anything. If they ask me any questions, I'll tell them to go back to their homes. Mm. You understand where I'm coming from? Aha, I can do anything, it's me time, and by the grace of God, may I see long life, you understand? But, before you get, you find mm. out, but you see the heart and the head, there are two different things, though. the emotions can push you this way, Reality is another thing. So you need to come back to yourself and be emotionally intelligent and being able to clinically, realistically, unemotionally deal with it. Is this person that is shocking me? Is this person got the values that would actually make for a good home? Am I only thinking about myself? Or am I thinking of the children too? You understand? There are things you can ask. There are things you can ask. A lot of times people see the negative, but it may be very distant initially. And they think, oh, with time, it will change. But when you now get into it, that is when that other side will recede and the other one will come forward. How do you deal with that? You're already in there. And what do you do? You understand? Again, I speak from experience. Like I said earlier, initially I went into a relationship because as a younger person and everything, but I didn't know a lot of things that I knew today. And it didn't last because I wasn't going to compromise anything that will cause me not to give the children my best. And it says there's this idiom, love me, love my dog. So if you say you love me, you better love my children as well because they are an extension of me and I am going to account to God for them. So I learned that and that's why I help a lot of, uh, you know, single people or those going through, uh, because it's not just young people. You will find that there are some matured people who have made errors because they don't know what to do. Being technically sound does not mean that you, you know, you are sound in behavioral patterns. Your attitude and behavior is quite different from your technical. You could be very successful as a, as, 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 as a human being in what you are doing, but you are not a success because your attitude and behavior sucks. Do you understand? I should say thank you. Oh, she couldn't hear me. Yes, we could hear you. Thank, thank yeah, you, ma'am. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yes, the line was uh, breaking. But now, oh, well, my own line was so breaking. So I'm going to have yeah. Dr. Franklin. At, yeah. 
Ask me one question, Dr. Franklin. Is it possible to be happy as a single parent? That's one. Secondly, how can a single parent raise happy children? How can single parents raise happy children? And is it possible to have to be happy as a single parent? You're muted. You're muted, Dr. Franklin. Dr. Franklin, you are muted. You need to mute your mic before we can hear you. I can see you're talking, but we can't hear you. Unmute your mic. But we can't hear you. Okay, while we are waiting for him to sort out that. Dr. Franklin, your mic is muted. You need to unmute it before we can hear you. I'm not sure if you can. Can every other person hear me? No, I'm clear, ma. Okay, let me, I'll, I will come back to him. So I'll take this question to Dr. Samuel. Children by single parents have so much expectation from their parents than those trained by both parents. Why is that? Okay. Dr. Franklin, we can hear you now. Oh, okay, sorry. I have so you can ask him. Oh. So the question over again. Is it possible to be happy as a single parent? And how can a single parent, how can single parents raise happy children? Let me, I think he may be having something. Yes, it's possible to her to be happy as a single parent. Yes, uh, uh, you understand? It's very possible. It depends on your mindset. Hello? You, you have to decide. Okay, he's back. You can go on, Mike. Can me? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, you can go on, Dr. Lila. Yeah. Okay. okay, it is it is possible to be happy as a single parent. As I said, it's all a choice. It's a matter of choice, understanding the uh, sacrifices that are there and not regretting anything or wishing. You see, it's a mind thing. It's a mindset thing. If you keep re regretting and wishing it was different, you will be unhappy with your situation. Whether single parent or double parent, you will be uh, not happy with your situation. But if you train yourself that what you cannot change, you have to change your own approach to it. And based on that, you can actually um, raise happy children because all they will uh, have is happy memories. There is laughter. There is joy in the house. You are creating an ambience of laughter and joy with discipline, of course, laughter and joy with discipline they will learn so long as you don't transfer your own bitterness your own unforgiveness your mm. own critical side so long mm. as you don't transfer it to them that is when there will be a problem if mm. you, know, you understand they will grow up not to be happy mm. they too will be wishing so whatever you go through they uh, they will mirror it the children will mirror whatever it is. So it's not all about money. You may not have much, but you create a nice ambience in the house and they will grow up to be, you know, uh, happy children. Yes, one parent was missing, but except that parent died, you will have 
uh, visitation rights. You will make sure that they have visitation rights. And it is possible. Single parents, uh, the, the children of single parents have done wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully well. My children are doing, my, my madams are doing wonderfully well. In fact, we have a situation whereby they come during Christmas, during everything, like yesterday was Good Friday, the whole house, it was filled up uh, without inviting anybody. You, we don't need to invite people for parties. We defer and their spouse and their children, we make one. So they're happy, they're <laughs> making one. And it is because of those um, uh, sacrifices that I made. I made my errors. I made my mistakes and I learned from them. And I tried my best. I just tried my best, tried my best. You understand? That's why I, I advise people what to do. Uh, it all depends on you. It all depends on you. Are you going to be sacrificial, disciplined, diligent, have integrity? It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Thank you. Single parents have much expectation than those ones that are trained by both parents. Dr. Samuel. Your question again, please. Dr. Samuel, are you there? Yes, I'm with you, ma'am. Children by single parents have so much expectation from their parents than those trained by both parents. Why is that? Thank you very much. We see. Did you get a question? Yes, I got the question. Maybe we should. Oh, is off. I will need to leave at eight o'clock. Okay. It's, this is 8.58. Do you mean 9 o'clock, ma? 9 o'clock, yes. I will need to leave at 9 o'clock. Okay. okay, we have two minutes. Okay, before Dr. Samuel comes back. Okay, he's back. But let me just go to you before you go away, ma. Um, you mentioned that earlier, and I want us to address that. Is it right to decide to become a single parent when you don't have a spouse? You mentioned you died to die earlier about matured uh, single, either male and, or female, who decide to maybe go for different options to the parents. Well, I always say that you should look at the age that you decide. Dr. To have Lila, a I How always you say, you yeah, I'm on, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you, ma. Yeah. Loud and clear, ma. Yes, yeah. yes it's it's breaking, we say, can hear you. I always say that it's, it's very it's breaking. That is it about StreamYard. Zoom, I always prefer Zoom. <laughs> that is it about um about um age and having a child. Because people don't look at the nurturing years that they have with the child as the child is grown why, why i always say one thing you are getting older why do you want to be doing school runs then why do you want to do that do you understand but then it all depends on the person the person might psychologically feel that he she she is not a woman unless she can have a child now she could go and do an artificial insemination from um from uh, a fertility bank I mean, I don't agree with that, too. but then, you know, it's like having, uh, creating a child. God is not the one who has made it. You don't know the antecedents of uh, the sperm donor. You don't know anything about the person. You are just breeding. Now you could say, what about the person, a baby that is picked up by the side of the road? You have a baby. You have seen the baby. Do you understand? You see the baby and everything, and somehow you will be able to work with that child. But then to have a sperm bank, you don't know. You don't know how the baby is even going to turn out. 
by the time the baby comes out. And I don't know if it is, um, uh, me personally, I will not advise that because for me, it is uh, playing God. It's uh, forcing an issue. And if in years to come, you begin to regret it because this, this situation is X, Y, Z. I, 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 don't, I don't advise it. I don't advise it. Look, there are enough children out there in orphanages and everything that you can go and adopt. It's just that in our own neck of the woods here, Hey, you say to yourself, I need to have the child. I need to do this. I need to do that. But what if it's not in your own plan? Everybody comes to this world with a plan. You're not just here to be and do whatever. So I would say that such people should prayerfully um, do it. And not again, we come back to that situation. A lot of us think only of ourselves, what we want. Why we want it. Mm. Have you thought about that child? Have you thought about the years of that child? What the child needs? Mm. What the child wants? When the child asks you, who's my father? You say, they took you from a test tube. You mm. understand? When a child says, mm. who's my father? Even a raped person was, I was raped by so, 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 I didn't even, you know, there's a story. A child pick up by the mm -hmm. side of the road story. A test tube baby, there ain't no story. You are a test tube baby. And that child would need a lot of psychological help to be able to adjust. To be able to adjust. And in this neck of the woods, do we even understand? We're just beginning to understand uh, coaching, therapy, counseling. We're just beginning to understand that you pay for these services. It helps you to do so. So for me, madam, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't think it is right. And then at a certain age, you go and begin to have a child at 52, 53, 54, 55. How many years do you need to nurture that child? Are you going to now be doing school work, paying school fees and everything, when you should just be relaxing a little bit? Maybe you do. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so it's been nice uh, being on this um, program. I really must run. Oh, uh, now, before you leave, I just one last question for you. I will come back to Dr. Samuel and Dr. Franklin. Dr. Samuel is a gynecologist, so I'm coming back to him. So finally, Ma, before you leave, one last question to you. Do you, how do you need? Uh, what do you need to do to distress? prevent overwhelming responsibility and stay motivated as a single parent? That's my final question to you, ma, you before must, you leave. You must, be able to, you must be able to have me time. I used to have me time. I locked my bedroom door. I put outside, do not disturb at your own parent. You understand? I put outside the door. <laughs> I would not distress myself. And I would, um, you know, make sure I sleep well, make sure my thought patterns, you see, your thoughts actually govern everything that you do. So sleep well. I used to do a lot of exercise to try to distress all those uh, negative things. You know, being a single parent is not easy. Uh, I try to sleep as best as possible. And I watched uh, the friends that I kept. So you see the sleep, having your me, me time, don't overdo it. Some of the things you have to do away with, and Dr. Samuel, um, Dr. Franklin mentioned it, there are some things that you may have to cut out of your needs. Even when your friends are doing, buying this and doing this and doing that, it's, you, you, you don't follow them because you've already mm -hmm. seen what you need to do and you owe nobody any explanation. You see, it all depends on you. When you get into a situation whereby you, you get into expenses that you now regret and then you have problems, you take it out on those children. So cutting your coat according to your material, being able to, you know, live within a certain means, yet living nicely, you manage it and, you know, not doing things that would compromise. A lot of people, let me tell you something. A lot of people, I'm talking about women now because I'm a woman. A lot of women 
get into all kinds of situations because of the expenses that they go through. I should be this, I should be mania, this, this, I have to do this, I have to do that. I, I, I live here and um, from when I was in my late to early 30s, mid 30s, I, I was making sure that things that will get me into trouble, I will not do it. My, 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 my friends knew that I won't, I won't be, I won't indulge in Ashwabi. I'll just tell them, tell them, I, I, I just won't. If you don't want to invite me, it's okay. And it helped me and it bred values for my children too as well. I see those kind of values with them. They live well, food, but they won't go out of their way. They'll, they'll be nice, but they won't go out of their way. They'll save. They don't depend on anybody. They'll do their savings to be able to get what they want. Like I would tell them, we can't afford this now, but let's wait and see. I will never make a promise. As a single parent, don't make a promise you cannot keep. You must not. You will put, I will see what we can do. I will try to. So when any child comes and I, but mommy, you say, I said, when did I say that? I never said that. I said, I will see what I can do. <laughs> so that's why at this age, going on to 69, I have my peace. I am happy. Congratulations, man. <laughs> you understand? I have my energy, and my energy is a product <laughs> of understanding myself over the years and, you know, cutting my coat according to my material, watching the people I go out with. So, because of that, I can look any young person in the face and say, you can do it. If I can, you can. And look at me now. Do you see anything on my face? But it was tough at one point. Yeah. It was very tough. Because your values vis-a-vis -vis the easy way is an easy way to go. But you lose some certain kind of respect with your children in a certain mm. way. You understand me? All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Samuel, Dr. Franklin, and the lovely lady who invited me here. So I leave the floor. I wish I could be there for Dr. Samuel, the guy in it. But uh, thank you so, so much. Great. We are delighted to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, Thank you so much. God bless you, man. <laughs> we bless are you. We're actually running on. Thank you so much, Ma, for our time with me. You can the time. That's beautiful. She actually has a lot of experience. So I'll go to Dr. Franklin on that note. <laughs> what are the possible ways to become a single parent without a partner? I know the doctors they have in the house they have different view. <laughs> well, uh, you, when it comes to being a single parent, I think over the years there have been a lot of uh, development and uh, with regards to the issue. When it's when it uh, when it comes now to having a child, now you have to decide: do you want a biological child or do you just want a child? Because if it's just you, there are options uh, to get to to have to have to mm -hmm. adopt a child. So you're still going to be a parent, but it's not going to be your biological child. When it comes to having a biological child, I'm sure uh, Dr. Sam is going to say more about that. Generally, it's under the umbrella of assisted reproductive uh, technology, where you have uh, in, uh, in vitro fertilization. And it's in the case of the, the woman, I know that the world is evolving now. You even have men that want to be single parents. So but in the case of the woman, you may or may, uh, in case, if the issue has to do with uh, infertility with, with regards uh, to uh, other uh, factors which are, are not related to ovaries, which means that you have viable eggs, you, you are of reproductive age and you have viable eggs, so the, the, the whole process, uh, like I said, it has it, the term, it's an, an umbrella of assisted reductive technology. So there's the whole process that you need to go through, you're harvested, you, 
you have a, 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 a sperm from a donor bank, sperm bank. It's true, this, all of these are uh, kind of pretty new, if I may say, in Africa, but these are uh, technologies that have been developed uh, extensively in other parts of the world, in Europe and in, in France, in, in America, sorry. Um, I don't know if Dr. Samuel might have something to add to that. I, it is full of this special thing. Let me ask this yes. way that what had brought okay. you give to your single patients who want to be parents who want to have their own children, but they are single? I have been trained to support women whenever they want medically, to. What had yeah, medically, what have you? Yeah, medically. I will not discourage a woman from fulfilling a dream of being a parent or a mother. The, there is only one thing I don't want to take away from a, a patient, and that is hope. Because when you take that away, the patient can just go into depression. You don't know what, in Africa, we are, uh, bearing child is paramount. We, uh, we, we hold it in high esteem, and it's part of our culture. And you cannot remove that. I have seen a case in which I understand what Dr. Lila is trying to say. There are some uh, uh, some some gray area in assisted reproductive technology, and that is one of the things she mentioned about talking about fertilizing somebody that you know that doesn't have much time to spend on it. Sixty years old woman, a woman with uh, cancer, and want to have children. They will terminally ill patient. There are gray area in which what become of those babies of those kids after they are done. It's a gray area. But um, we are not. We don't try. We try not to play God. If that is the patient's wish, and that's what will make the patient feel unhappy, I will still go ahead after proper counseling, telling the woman the pros and the cons of the decision she's about to take, and what the effect of that decision may actually uh, translate to in our society. Because people must actually see uh, the outcome of the decision they are about taking. You must make that right to call it informed decision. They are taking decision based on information you've made available to them. So if a woman that is a woman, a single, that wants to be a single mother, and she has all the resources after proper counseling, it is my job to make that happen. And God helping us, some other people survive. If I'm not God, I don't know how much she's going to spend on it. So I will not prevent any woman from achieving a dream while she's alive because of my orientation of my dream. Thank you. You are muted. We can't hear you. Mama T, you are muted. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So I was talking to Dr. Franklin that on the final notes, what's your final word on this topic, single parenting? What's your advice for single parents? And also, I'd like you to help us with the proper pronunciation of your two other names. I do want to murder the name. So please help us with the name. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I guess you're in me. Hello? We can hear you now. You're sounding far away now. Oh, okay. I'm... Is it better now? Okay, better. Yes, yes, clear. All right. The name now, Franklin Kingafak Ngeu, that's that's how you pronounce the name. Kingafak Ngeu Franklin. It's actually originated from the southern region of Cameroon. Concerning your question, uh, if I recall you, the question was about advice to single parents. So, uh, 
I'm going to put it in two groups. You have single parents that are single parents not by choice. Then you have single parents that are single parents by choice. So if you're going to be, if you are if you are a single parent that it's not by choice, maybe a relationship that didn't work out or one of their parents passed away, the, generally it comes, it meets you very, very unprepared. So the very first thing that you need to do is to get help. Talk to somebody, talk to a specialist. You might just just even talk even to, uh, you, you need to really have a support system. People that are going to help you out because it's not something that you, one, you were not prepared for it and it's definitely not something you can do on your own. So you need to get professional help and talk to friends, close friends and family members whom you trust that are going to help to uplift you emotionally because the tax that is ahead, it's not something that is easy or something that you, you can take lightly. Now to the other group, someone who is a single parent by choice. Equally, you need help, but before you make that choice, like what Dr. Samuel was saying, is what we call in medicine informed decision. You need to be informed about what you're getting into. What, what have you taken as a decision as to the process to which you are going to go through to have that child? Because uh, just being financially, the, 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 in Cameroon now, the cost of uh, as an individual fertilization is around three thousand, three thousand three hundred US dollars, and the success is not a hundred percent. So those are things that you need you you need to know beforehand before you're taking the decision. Okay, how do I prepare to bring this child? I have taken the decision that I want to be a single parent. It's my choice. It's not something that was imposed upon me or not something that happened. Uh, uh, coincidentally, it ha I decided to be a single parent. Now I need to understand what it entails to be a single parent because generally, if you know what you're getting to, you'll be better prepared to get into it. So, generally, the advice I'm going to give, especially to someone that decides to be a single parent, do your research, ask questions, know as much as you can concerning how you're going to have a child, how you're going to raise that child, even getting psychological help, like what Dr. Lila was saying, this child is going to grow up one day and ask, who is my father, who is my mother? You need to know how to address those, 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 address those uh, situations to the child. There's something that called uh, 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 progressive disclosure. How are you going to disclose it to the child? You, you might need help from a counselor or from a coach to be able to talk to this child and tell this child, okay, this is what happened. Sometime, some years ago, I took a conscious decision to be a single parent. You know, how you're going to break it to the child in, in, in manners that are not going to be traumatic to the child. So I think in all that, that's what I'm going to give us an advice. I don't know if Dr. Sam has something else to add. Dr. Samuel, your advice. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. My advice concerning singles that want to be a single parent is that you should count the cost and go for what makes them happy. That's all. Thank you very much. Much for having you, Dr. Franklin. We are so, so delighted to have you. It's uh, such a beautiful time. So on this note, we are going to be closing on this episode of Single Parenting that's on Real Men's Talk. So my word for the, of encouragement to you, if you are a single parent, is that you are doing a great job. You are stronger than you think you are. So stay motivated, you are doing well. You can be happy as a single parent and you can sure raise successful children. Thank you for being a part of this episode on Women Talk. We look forward to having you on another episode of RM2. Till we come your way again, 
Remember to share the video. Join the, I mean, like the video. Join and invite your friends to the Real Men's Talk Forum. If you are watching live later, remember to add tag replay. So see you on another episode. Bye for now. Dr. Samuel, Dr. Franklin, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. And happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> I think I forgot that. Happy Easter. <laughs>